Good morning, everyone. As you can tell, clouds are coming in today, but it's still very, very warm. And I thought that I was going to go and make myself a little bouquet of those daffodils down there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go cut some and put them in a nice vase. And I thought maybe you'd be interested in that. These are tiny little miniature ones. They're very tiny. It is starting to sprinkle. Oh dear. Oh, just a couple more, I think. Put them in a little bag and or a little pretty little vase and we'll be good. So here we are, we have our pretty little flowers and Mindy Lou is up here waiting for me. None of my pups like the rain, unfortunately, so she is eager to get back in. Even though, as you can see, I am not about, like, in any way, am I getting wet. So, I think I'll go find a vase. Aren't they sweet? Look at how little they are. They're just really tiny. They are less than an inch. Maybe about an inch, but probably not quite. I just think they're so sweet. And that little vase that's in, it's actually a little ceramic pot that my daughter-in-law made when she was in college. Hold on a minute. Didn't need to overheat the pan. Anyways, what I decided to do is just to take a couple chicken breasts out of the freezer, defrost them halfway, because if you totally defrost them, they're horrible. But um, then what I did is I tried to pound them, but they're still a little too frozen, but they did pound some. So what I decided to do, because it, I'm just winging it here. My um, son and his girlfriend, had gone down to, you know what, I, I know it's somewhere near Philadelphia, but that's where her parent, her mom lives. And they stop at a place that sells all different kinds of oils. And they got me this oil, which is um, olive oil with rosemary. And I love rosemary. And so I thought, you know what, I am gonna cook this in, in this oil. So I opened it up for the first time and what I did is I went ahead and, oh, can you see here? I cut the breast in half because these were huge. And this is a heaping spoonful of arrowroot and a heaping teaspoon of tapioca starch. So. I went ahead and put some salt and pepper in it and I coated it and now I'm gonna fry it up. So I thought that when it was halfway done, I would sprinkle some sesame seeds on top because they're really good for you. And I might put a few little hemp seeds on top too just because they're good for you and you really can't taste them. So we'll see how it turns out and I have figured out he's probably just gonna get stuck with a baked potato because I don't know what else to do. I forgot all about planning a dinner today. Let's see how this works. Oh, I think they might be needing... Nope, they don't need to be turned. I have them on a medium-high heat. Might be a little too high. I think I need to add just a little more, a little more oil. Because I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a little bit of the sesame seeds on top because I think they're ready to turn. And then a little bit of the, the hemp. See what happens here. There we go. All right, well, I will show you how they turn out. Well, that's his dinner. I actually had to cut them in half again, 
in order to just hurry up the cooking time. So that's why you see three pieces. There's actually four pieces, one still in the pan. That's on a lot of chicken. Anyways, I hope it's good. I hope he enjoys it. I just wanted to thank everybody for their support with my YouTube videos. I really enjoy making them. And I enjoy the sharing and the interaction that I get to have with you folks when you leave your comments. And I really encourage you to leave comments because I really do enjoy them. I, I look for them. I'm on my computer and I'll start to, to you know, kind of search. Did anybody leave a comment? I really enjoy that. And please share the videos with your family and with your friends. Um, there's a share button right down below. You just press share and you can share it to, you know, Google. You can share it to Facebook. You can sh Twitter it. You can do all sorts of things. And below that then is the, actually the web address for the video. So you can always copy and paste it if you'd like to do that. But anyways, I just want to again, thank you. And I hope that you are blessed as much as I am blessed with these videos. Well, here we are again, and I am going to be reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. You know, First Peter, it's all about persecution and the way Christians should respond to that. And it's actually a very practical book because it meets the needs of real people. Keep in mind, though, that this was written to believers and they were scattered throughout all the provinces or districts of Asia Minor. And these Christian believers were experiencing severe persecution. Peter wants them to understand that although they were suffering for the sake of Jesus Christ, they could still have joy and they did not need to be fearful of what men might do to them. And Peter starts off with a beautiful doxology with verse 3 where he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Wow. This word of praise centers on the fact of Jesus' death and resurrection. Christ's resurrection is the keystone to Christianity. Remove it and everything is shattered. Because of his resurrection, we have a living hope. This hope that we look forward to is called an inheritance by Peter in, in these verses. That inheritance is the full possession of all that God has given to us in salvation. And our inheritance is a guarantee. It is guaranteed to be waiting for us and it will not fade away. It will not decay and our inheritance will be revealed on the last day. 
So, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. And the word kept in verse 5, where it says, who are kept by the power of God. Now remember this. God's people, what this kept means is guardisoned. And what he, this is telling us is that God's people are being guarded by God's power through faith until we fully inherit that which will be real, revealed to us in the last time. That's a beautiful thought. And in the last time means at the end of the age when Jesus is, comes back and we get to reign and live with him forever. That's when we will inherit our inheritance. And until then, the power of God is protecting us so that we can inherit it. Remember that. God bless, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.